Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've never, I haven't really had them tap on my shoulder. So you usually run, run, but then um, it's always tough, I've had sure. people <laughs> when I've done shows and stuff, and then just being really angry and saying, "Oh, this person's done it all over my building," and I'm like, "Oh, we'll tell him off, or we'll just speak to him." when we see him about it, you know, so, or usually I'd just be like, oh, he's just, I was just holding the can and he's just gone to get some food, you know what I mean? So I usually try and, but if they see you in the act, then that's it, isn't it? You can. Holding his up. can, <laughs> he's just gone to get some food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, as a friend Love of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a mate of mine. I literally, I'm just caddy. The killer, killer, podcast KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. One, two, one, two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Get it. We have one, two, one, two inside the place to be. Killer Keller podcast live and direct. Central London or central as you need to be. Big shout out to all the regulars. Hold tight. Pirate.com. 24-7 music, podcasts and dance studios all across the UK. And to all the people, the purveyors of street culture, uh, flying the flag and spreading the love, um, word is bond. Big up for that. And also, hold tight, Kellervision app holders. Everybody's got the Kellervision app free. Download iPhone, Android for your street culture sports. What mini docs we've got, live streams, DJ mixes, and the podcast. Come on, son. Notorious. Um, inside the house. God, it's fucking great to be me. Inside this piece, we have one of the main... I, th- I would say if you were to put the top five people that were uh, on the fringe of the street art before it got trendified, you will recognise this man's stuff all over the shop. We're talking about the tooth. We're talking about the teeth. We're talking about the grit and the smile. We're talking about sweet tooth in the building. How are we? <laughs> all right, all good. It doesn't... Honestly, my intro does not even... Touch the surface on on the flowers that, uh, in my opinion, you should be getting, brother. Because uh, you really were at the beginning fringes before it was even called street art. You were out there. Yeah, I don't know. I was just doing my thing, you know, sort of um, just you know progressing from graffiti and then just doing teeth. You know, it's like <laughs> one of them things. I just kind of always used to do teeth and did them in my letter forms and then I felt like oh maybe I should just do the teeth mm. on their own and then it's like an identity thing as well and it sort of they find I- identity <laughs> yeah but if they fi- find your body you know they, they identify you by the teeth you know so yeah. if you're ever trying to get rid of a you know, a body, you have to make sure you get rid of the teeth, don't you? It's true. Hey, yeah. I, I might add as well, the pixelation does not do him justice. He has got a beautiful set of teeth. Um, so you're absolutely right. On intro, it is the teeth that make hold all the hold all the characteristics of yeah. either they're going to like you or hate you. Um, brother, it's a mass. You've done so much in the time that I... I remember orbiting East London very... Um, early age uh, and because I lived there I frequented there there was places like the Dragon Bar and stuff yeah. and, and graffiti was really still a bit of an underdog even in the street art sense but I just remember seeing your you know, these this this emblem everywhere of the teeth of the of the gums and uh, it, it was this a, it felt like you were a part of the emergence of along with the likes of Ein a toaster, yeah, you know, and and solo one, of course, with the stickering. You did you feel that you were onto something? That you were on the early fringes of what what was the phenomena? I I just felt I just wanted to um, get out there and then try and make something a little bit simpler uh, that would kind of stick in your head, if you know what I mean. Like a simple, like you know, if I'm to roll or a teeth. It's not rocket science. It's just like a big pink sausage with these little wheels on it <laughs> so it's just like you know it's just but it's just like you know everyone can identify with a smile or a pair of teeth and it's like that whole retro thing when you're a kid you know the little candies you'd get the little eggs and yes. you get the, the little candy yeah. you know gummy uh sweets you know like mm. teeth sweets and stuff like that but it's almost like reminiscing about like childhood things what 
was in my childhood as well, you know, like the oh, little gums and this, that, the other. And then also years ago, you know, like pink spray, we used to, where I was from, you know, we used to use like magic shoe spray and stuff like that because we couldn't get pink spray back then. And then we'd have to go to Manchester and get bunt lack. So you'd get the rose pink bunt lack. But mm-hmm. pink was a real luxury colour, you know, in the 80s for, for like a in lot England. A people say that, yeah. Because it was like, oh, you know, you don't really see that many pink cars driving around, do you? No, no. <laughs> so, so it was like one of these things, oh, you know, if you did that, it's almost like it was quite quite a good thing. So I just thought, oh, I just want to make these pink gums and mm. stuff like that. And because it stuck out more because it was a luxury having those colours. Yeah, and it's just bright. And... You know what, um, you know what your style kind of reminds me of? I hope you don't take offence to this. I'm sure you won't. But... Hanna Barbera, but more specifically, the backdrop of Banana Splits. Okay. I don't, Do you know the Banana Splits? I don't know Splits? if I've seen the backdrop for that. No, so but, yeah. there was there was this there was this children's program that was made by Hanna Barbera, yeah. which which proceeded from the cartoons like you know like Flintstones and Top Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But what this was was a, a it was almost like power rangers but for but cuddly characters and like yeah. a dog and a oh, an elephant okay. and things like that and they used to have a theater piece backdrop i'll have to yeah. show you it because you'll lose yeah. it you'll be like, i think i vaguely remember something like that is that in the 80s was yeah, it? In the yeah. 80s, 80s, late yeah. 70s or something 87, yeah. it was all very groovy and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah uh, and funky yeah funky as fuck yeah um but yeah it's it holds such a a, a nostalgic quality your your pieces it's yeah. very interesting that yeah. you say and then that. it's just like simply simplifying things and breaking things down it's like you know cause some of the spots you do are quite hot so you just have to think how can i do it the simplest so you know if i was to write my tag and just doing it i used to do it all like up and down and stuff like the, all the letters but then i just came up with oh i could just do a twirl you know and just go round and round and round and then that reads as the teeth you know mm-hmm. so i was like oh well that says it you know, if you just see that squiggle like that, mm. that can be Colourella, the Colourella. teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's the same as, like, with the gums, you know, try and keep it simple. And then sometimes you can bling it up. And then sometimes, you know, you can kind of adapt it to studio work as well. So I do, like, oil painting and stuff like that. So although it's like a cartoon motif, it's kind of goes into my studio practice, if you know what I mean. So that was quite nice in a way, it kind of, you know, it, each one feeds each other, you know, so the stuff that you do on the street and... The atmosphere you get from being outside on the street at night and, you know, painting and just all the little stories that you get, you can put into the studio stuff, you know, studio work. Feeds into the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of the things, you know, it's like when you're a writer and you're just going out and the things that you see and the atmosphere and then, you know, the sky at night and the way it goes light in the morning, all these different things, it all feeds in somewhere, doesn't it? So it's like, for me, when I'm going out painting them, I kind of always, like, was aware of things going on around me, but then I'd kind of almost trying to memorise all the moments and then you put that into the work and then Mm. you can kind of get the teeth creeping in. And it was, when I was doing all the letter pieces, it was quite hard to actually adapt that because it wasn't really character-based, but then I can still, I can bring the letters now into the pieces with the character from with the teeth if that makes sense it does make complete sense yeah. and if you haven't seen any of the the more finer side of sweet tooth you do have a way of like you say integrating what you see on the street into a really you know beautiful pitch <laughs> it's like you know what it reminds me of uh, covers of asterix books where yeah. you've got that beautiful landscape and you've got these characters yeah in there yeah, yeah it's yeah. the it's the it is that um juxtaposition of it all mm. which is fantastic i love that element that you bring in. yeah yeah and you can get your influences from many places i mean years ago you know it was like a lot of writers you know like vaughn bode and stuff like that so you'd look at all them and you put them into your, your pieces mm. and stuff but then you know i can get influences from anything it can just be you know it could be a christmas card it could be this that the other mm. you know iron maiden cover mm-hmm. you know different things you just look at whatever it takes to make you tick and mm. to get excited by it you know funny you say iron maiden cover some uh what they call tankard and annihilator and all these different rock bands back in the day yeah. they really made it a thing i mean eddie and iron maiden were definitely the 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 top of the tree yeah but there was a lot of amazing graphics graphics and, wasn't yeah on album the covers yeah yeah um i often thought that perhaps hip-hop had a little way to go considering that they were it it, it had the arm of graffiti in, in mm-hmm. amongst it compared to the rock stuff it really wasn't saying yeah. a lot on its album covers yeah. was it but the old street sounds you know the old street sounds 
electro covers, I always thought they were amazing, I mean, yeah. just graphically and all that lot, you Big know, oral sex and everything. So sort of, you'd, you'd see see the covers of them, and then when um, was it T Rice, and yeah. then it had you know like Hip Hop Nineteen and Twenty, and exactly. just that, you know, and with the airbrush stuff and stuff like that. But that was a big influence on. Like how to make an image, yeah. You know, back then, you know, with the little airbrush, yeah. we used to use these little diffusers in school and try and really blow the, <laughs> blow the spray on to make a little outline. You know, that's so sick. Yeah, you were like, on it from the yeah, jump. Yeah, like spin, <laughs> spinning records in Manchester and stuff like that. You know, let's get into those. this here, right? Yeah. So, because we all come from somewhere. Where are you from, brother? I'm from up north, um, somewhere just past Manchester. I'm not going to say where, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind your business so, out there. Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere it. up north, um, a little bit past Manchester. And then um, and then I lived in London for many years. I came here for art school mm. back back in 96, um, finished mm-hmm. 99, and then uh, ended up living in Hackney for years, you know. Hence where the, inf- the that, that development yeah. started. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, that makes sense. So I was at the yeah, academy in, in Piccadilly and then did that, like just almost like academic figure painting and stuff like that. So it was wow. a lot different to graph, but then I was doing all that, but then I felt really restricted. So I'd still be going out doing track sides and stuff, you know, when I was in college. Yeah. But then um, it was like a turnaround. I kind of did all that. And then afterwards, I kind of shook it all off afterwards and then started yeah, yeah, <laughs> going yeah. back to what I used to do. But then you still bear in mind what you learned in art school, you know. It's like so what I the best artists do, the best yeah, artists do that, don't they? so I kind of thought, well, I'll use some of that, but instead of painting nudes and still life, so I'm going to be yeah. <laughs> painting teeth, you know, and sort of <laughs> yeah. do that, but then try and make a bit more form in them and stuff, you know, when I'm in the studio and that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it would have been impossible for hip-hop, hip-hop of its time not to have been an influence for you. Yeah. Um, uh, and we did have a chat before, of course we do, and you were mentioning, you know, that you... You were very much because you used to get up. You used to do graph, yeah. bona fide graph as, as we know it on on the podcast here. But uh, but this was this was part of uh, many different facets within hip hop and your mm. and your artistic career in university that kind of merged and made this hot hot potch of like different uh, w- what became the sweet tooth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like even hip hop. You know, when it first the first wave. You know, like I was saying earlier, mm. it's like you know, like Street Machine and stuff like that on top of the pops and then like, you know, um, uh, Buffalo Girls and stuff like that, Malcolm McLaren. Mm. And then you sort of, you know, like I, I was almost when I was really young, I was into like madness and, you know, score music and mm. specials and stuff like that. But then I really liked the graphics and everything on, on the, like Bad Manners, you know, mm-hmm. the, the album cover with the thing and that. So I'd always like look at the album covers and everything. But then, like, hip-hop kind of came in and, like, the next thing, you know, it was all, like, BMX and skateboarding, but then everyone, like, spinning on the head on a cardboard box. So yeah. tried that a little bit, crap at breakdancing, crap at skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> and then all I could do is nick paint from B&Q and mm. then do and spray in the local skate park, you know? And then, uh, so you'd be painting, doing your pieces and everything. But then it was, like, listening to all the electros and, like, listening to all that and it all fed in and you just kind of, you know, it, it all kind of feeds in you and just, like... You know, you're just drawing outlines. Of, you know, you just get really obsessed yeah. with it, don't you? you? You really do. And um, I think that's what gives people drive. And I think graffiti has for everyone. You know, it's yeah. like all that stuff about, you know, even artists in the studio and everything, you know, being motivated. But then I see what the graffiti writers do. You know, they'll go and paint out in the snow or mm. they'll paint a fucking train and be up all night doing this, that, the other. Yeah, yeah. But that gives you good training to be motivated and to be studio active. Completely. You know, so you, you get this motivation which... You know, you don't necessarily get being in the studio because you're like, oh, I'll just have a coffee and I'll put some music on, it's all yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then when you're With out Radio there, you know, like there's a fucking shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> helicopter coming and you've got all these things going against you, you know, yeah. but then it kind of gives you that little bit of a drive and a little bit of a goal, mm. you know, so you get little goals to do. And it's She's like, part of the natural curriculum, shouldn't yeah. it? You have to do six months of graph. Yeah, <laughs> and before if you get, going to art school, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't get caught, you get the, you get the diploma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is all like, you know, am I going to get caught? Am I not? I'm going to mm. get away with it, you know? Is, am I safe? You know, mm. you don't feel safe until you actually get in the house and then even then you can get grassed on, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot so. of variables. Um, and just circling back around the whole Scar era, because, um, you know, we, we mentioned and me yeah. and Drax and all the guys that you know that grew up on Scar as well. And actually, can I just say before I go any further, you know a lot about Graph, I, I, and I say that mm. in, in as much kind of respect because 
You know, we were talking about untouchables. We were talking about you know, mean mere PFB mm. and all that. And you, and you, you really, you're a study as much as you are a, yeah. a, a creative, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm thankful for it because that's what kind of got me into art. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I remembered that, and then I've kind of gone back to that now. You know, I'm sort of. Um, you know, going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, big up of, all the midlife crisis yeah, crew. But it's, <laughs> we know who we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but midlife crisis, MLC, you know. But yeah. I, I um, you know, I, I, it's something which I love. And I mm. think if you find something that you love and enjoy, you're going to, you know, whether it's music, painting, fishing, whatever yeah. it is, if you find that enjoyment in something mm. in life, then it's going to bring the best out of you, you know. Do you think you, reg- regress is the wrong word, but do you think you, do you think you hold on, to a lot more of the uh, graffiti core values with that uh, quote unquote midlife experience. Do you feel like uh, you really actually treasure the more grit, grittier aspects of, of uh, knowing it, of knowing graffiti? Uh, I, I kind of hold on to it and I really value it, but it's almost like, you know, and you doing it, even what I'm doing, I'm like, you know, I'll have to put a power line on them. Oh, what would happen if I put a 3D on here and all mm. that lot and some shines and this, that, the other. So mm. you, you go through all them kind of motions, but then it's almost like sometimes all of that and then trying to make a wild style can be great and everything, but then sometimes you feel, well, I used to feel quite stressed, so I just want to be quite loose and get mm. grips and let the paint drip or just be quite spontaneous, like it's just been thrown up on the mm. wall and... Stuff like that. So yeah. it's like a mix, just trying to get a balance between the two, you know, yes. so you can have the the sort of academic, you know, the academic or the, you yeah. know, this sort of clean graphic stuff, but then mix it with a bit of looseness as mm. well. So it's about thinking two different ways, isn't it? Yeah. With art and being taught it, you have to have, you have to find freedom within the disciplines they set you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Graph does you, that. You get, yeah, yeah. It does do that. But it's like, you know, a, co- a train can't go by without, like, looking at it and you're scouring it, so, you know, and, like, looking for tags or, you know, like yeah. a freight train will go past <laughs> and you're just, like, looking at it, like, a, scanning it. And you can always tell a writer from that, can't you, you know? Standard, of yeah. course. Um, just going back to what I was saying about the Scar era, um, and, again, big up Mean and Drax and all the, the form and older guys, because um, we've talked about this, and there was something really, really um, uh, vibrant about... People like uh, Madness, they were tagging yeah. uh, and doing things, but I guess they were transferring it from a more political place like NF mm. and more, uh, I don't know, there was a couple around here, Scam uh, mentioned, that, that were all very much uh, about community drive and, yeah, um, yeah. it wasn't as so much vandaling, vandalising, but more political, yeah. charged, you know, protest um Pieces, pieces, yeah. But that yeah. was that was a that was a real thing back in the mm. day, wasn't it? Yeah, like maybe in the like late seventies, early eighties, it was the first thing I saw was like punk, loads of punks, punk graph, and mm. then like punks, punks were here and that, and then mods, and then you know you get the little arrow on the mods mm. and the who and that, and then like scar yes. and skins. Yeah. So it'd just be really basic stick letters, but uh, I used to love it, and I I can't even remember how old I was. I was only a little kid, and mm. then. I'd say to my mum, oh, what's all that? She goes, oh, it's the naughty boys. And I just thought, oh, I want to be one of them. <laughs> you know I mean? so, Have you got a contract for that? Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I wanted to be one of them. And I just thought, oh, that's cool. So, But I was more towards the, you know, the scar and the skins and the, mm. the mods, kind of that, like quadrophenia, so mm. that kind of stuff. And I really like the fashion and the style then, you know, what the... Almost like the uniform, you know, the mm. parkers and stuff like that, you know, fishtails and stuff. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's very yeah. cosy and nostalgic. But it was like hip-hop the same, isn't it? It's like yeah. I I ended up buying a... talking about midlife crisis again, but I bought a snuggle jacket, you know, the old MB jackets. Yeah, of course. With, yeah. A, with a fur on it, and like I wanted to start collecting all these patches and sticking them all on. And mm. I said, oh, it's for a sculpture. So I said to my girlfriend at the time, oh, this is... A sculpture project I do, but really it was for me. You know, as my man came yeah. and got this jacket, and I was just gonna sell these old public enemy patches. And I started looking at the prices of public enemy patches, and I was like, "This is mental! Project. I can't do this. It's yeah. like crazy expensive. It's not like you know the old Def Jam stuff that you used to have when you were kids. It's really expensive now. Yeah, know? and there's nothing worse than going online and realizing that everyone's had a similar idea to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the prices have gone yeah, straight yeah, up. Yeah. 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 
Um, and you were into DJing. You mentioned the DJing side. Uh, of no, I, can't, I never DJ. You no, never DJ. I DJ'd? wish I could DJ. Ah, yeah, right. but I know I, lo- I love the music, yeah. but I could never, never DJ. I tried to scratch, but it just broke the record. Yeah, yeah I get you. I get yeah. you. I've been there as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got sausage fingers. You know, I'm not very, <laughs> very good. Uh, big up the Dick Finger crew. You know you are. Um, yeah, galloping horses as well. Nothing worse than the records. Just not sorting it out. You yeah. know, you think it's easy. It's not easy. Um, yeah. And on the subject of music, which is something I, I brought up when we were chatting, is like, you know, it's, it's um, fundamental that you go backwards to look forward. And, and well, that's what hip hop allowed us to do. It allowed us to go backwards into the recesses of where the samples came mm. from, where the music came from, and how people came to the conclusion of those samples happening. I'm sure it happens quite a bit, but, you know, looking back, it allows you to be into things like Mo Wax and Uncle. Yeah. And then you see Futura do something on on a uh, on, on a uh, what was it it was um what label what did the did the Futura stuff I mean he did Clash obviously yeah but it was James Lavelle yeah what? with James Lavelle yeah yeah, yeah. I mean uh, he's the golden science fiction and all that and then yeah all, all... Yeah, all the Uncle albums. Was yeah. that was that Mo Wax? Was that Mo Wax? Uh, I always thought it was Mo Wax, but yeah, it maybe it was not Must be, must yeah. be. Comment below. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the the connectivity of modern music, yeah. um, of that time moving forward into in, in, into now, mm. I think that was really informative for, for particularly for the likes of me. It mm. was like it almost felt like you you were, you were really ahead of something. When Shadow dropped yeah. that, introducing and and knowing that he was into hip hop like that, yeah, yeah. And then you see graffiti and the backdrops yeah. of all and the... all the uncle as well. The album, you know, a folder album and stuff like yeah. that. When you get it, it's really tangible, and you see all the artwork in there. It kind of takes you back to being a teenager again, you yeah. know, like from the old days of electro and stuff like that. You know, cool. covers that must have really influenced you for its time. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, well, well still does. It's sometimes you see the odd catchy thing when you look at album covers and you're like, wow, that's freaking banging. You know, yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking like yeah. this was definitely of a late nineties, early noughties. Yeah, and old street of its time was a very different place. It's yeah, the old a... Dragon Bar. You're yeah. talking about the old one because that used to be wicked. Because you'd go down there and then like. It was like, you know, going to a New York bar or something like a dive bar, you go in there and absolute bomb toilets, complete full of tags, and everybody and anybody had been there mm. tagging. But then they had the car park out the back and they'd have breakers there and everything like that. They had really cool music. Oh, and God, that it was brilliant. Awesome, Do you know what I mean? They had the little gallery upstairs and everything. But I used to love the Dragon Bar and I used to sort of stagger home after there. And it's just, yeah, it was just always the best down there. But then they changed it and then there was like, no tags in the toilet and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. They're new place, but I think they're they're still going, aren't they, in Hastings? So yes, very much so. They're, it's still a great bar, great food, and everything. Yeah. You know, feels good. Yeah, that's the thing. Things always move on. Yeah, these beautiful moments. Um, tell us about because we haven't really touched on this too much on on the podcast, and it'd be really great to get your insight. Explain or at least allow us to imagine what the landscape was like in Old Street, East London, for its time. You know, from that transition from desolate to to graffiti yeah. to street art. Explain that. Yeah, well, it was a lot of open spaces and open lots. She didn't really feel safe, too safe walking around there. You'd have to be careful with your phone if you had a phone or your wallet or something like mm. that. So it felt a lot more sketchy. And, you know, like, even Brick Lane and that, you know, everything was a lot rawer and, like... Uh, yeah, it was just, it, it just had a nice pulse to it. But like I've been down around like Brick Lane and Shoreditch recently and it just completely not the same. It's just completely, I don't know, it's just got really gentrified, isn't mm. it? So you kind of feel a bit alien in there, you know? Mm. So it's the same as Hackney Wick. It's like, it's like really going to Tokyo or something. All these like tower blocks going up super yeah. fast and everything. And it was almost like a lot of these places in London, it's like in the skyline, there's always cranes, isn't there, developing yeah. a building. Always a development you, somewhere. You, you, never, you never think it's going to happen in the area where you go to. So I was like, oh, let's just go to a shit area and get yeah. a fucking studio there, so we're going to have to pay cheap rent. And then kind of the rent just went mental. I was just about fucking hanging on living there mm. and then had to move away, you know. Mm. So it's a bit of a shame, really, because it kind of, it's like as if the artist, it's the same as like, New York and stuff like that, Williamsburg and stuff, all these areas, they're all cool because the artists and graph painters are going there. Mm. But then they, then all the hipsters come in. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, let's go and live here. It looks really nice and mm. art. I'm like, oh, let's just clean all the art up and then get rid of all the bars because we don't mm. like noise. And then it yeah. just kind of... Yeah, they, became the, they become the boomers that then uh, make it... 
culturally acceptable yeah. to get rid of the thing that was the reason they came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, it was a blue note, wasn't it, in oh. Old Street? I don't know if that's still there. No, or it's that. not there no more. You used to a place you'd go and have Amazing. good music in there and mm. stuff like that. And then the plastic Dragon Ball. Plastic people and Dragon Ball. Yeah, plastic herbal people. And all yeah, that. yeah, all of them. Beautiful, yeah. But beautiful, I went in yeah. Jaguar Shoes, that's still open. That's I went still in there. there. Yeah, still Pop-tart hanging Jaguar in there, so yeah. kind of. Yeah. Went there. But no, it was always nice and you'd always meet, you know, different people there, you know, so you'd meet people from the music background or from painting background. So like the Dragon Bar was always a good almost like a writer's bench in a way. Mm. You'd go down and you'd you know, you you couldn't go for a pee without meeting a writer and st- you know, borrowing a pen or something like that, you know. Oh god, I love that. Yeah. It's it's funny because in actual fact, what what you're concluding there in my head was the idea that I had a while ago that You'll, you'll go to Shoreditch or the surrounding area, Hoxton, and you'll see the place battered and it's tolerated. But maybe the truth is it's because they don't care. Mm. The authorities don't care because they know that it's just going to be turfed up and yeah. redeveloped. I mean, it's like a free-for-all now. I've been walking around and doing a few mosquito bites around in the area, mm. but areas where years ago I'd just go out in the middle of the night and I'd be like paranoid Pete, like thinking I'm going to get busted. Mm. But now you can just bait and go in broad daylight and just mm. blast out a piece or a tag or something mm. like that, and no one bats an eyelid. Mm. You know, people just walk past you. It's just weird. It's like as if it's accepted. But I think, like you're saying, I think the... Authorities just think, oh, well, we're going to bulldoze it all anyway. Yeah. And the police have got better things to do with their time. Yeah. But, you know, still have known people to be stopped. And yeah. they can. It depends on what mood they are. They can still just stop you and just take you in because they're bored, you know. So Yeah, yeah. And it's tolerated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tolerated to a point. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how far, it's more of a, uh, a question for you, how far is tolerated when, okay, in an isolated place like East London all of a sudden you're down in Peckham and then all of a sudden you could be in Notting Hill, which are mm. very th- different places, places in terms of safety and yeah, standards. Yeah. They don't like it in Notting Hill like they used to like yeah. it in Notting Hill. Yeah, you know? yeah. They don't like the carnival, let alone, you know, people yeah. tagging on a regular. Tagging and that, yeah, yeah. They can't stop something and no. allow it in one place and decide. Yeah, no, it is interesting. So say, for instance, I was coming in and going, you know, like Notting Hill or something, and just like blast yeah. out of a tag there. Yeah. Like I could get busted, or I could just do exactly the same thing as Hackney down the road, and then people are like, "Oh, that's all right." Yeah, yeah. You know, because they're used to it. But it is really mixed, and and especially when you're in that mode and you're just doing stuff, you feel like, "Oh, wow, I can just paint anywhere I want," which you can. Yeah. You just go out. You know, if you really want to do a spot, you can do it. But yeah. it's just, it's just about like. Um, uh, understanding the, the pulse of the city and how it works and which places and this, that, the other. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of like Ooh. the adrenaline rush and I still get off on that, you know, that mm. whole fast heartbeat and sort of like, you know, you've got that little edge and you're sort of really nervous. And <laughs> do you ever get so, nervous after? That's a big question, actually. Because, yeah, yeah. Because it must yeah. do, even for the more seasoned, you know, street bomber. There's yeah, still well, a lot you get to a little in. bit. If you, it depends on what you're doing, but you do mm. get a little bit nervous afterwards you're a little bit like oh did anyone you know or, or if someone took a picture of you or something like that mm. and you just get a little bit paranoid but mm. then it's almost like it's just all about balance these things isn't it because you're going to go in waves but if you're doing it all the time then you just become really fucking paranoid it's quite stressful you know you just like think everyone's a cop and this that the other yeah just uh, to me for me that's a bit of it which i'm like that's too strong everyone knows where i live <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. With it, you know what i mean um yeah full on um what was i coming to yeah you're really apt at choosing your spots, you're finding your mm. locations. I, 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 I like seeing Sweet Tooth in those places are not only hard to reach <laughs> and noticeable, but it's, the, it's where you choose, or rather mm. where you don't choose. And, yeah. and sometimes you'll sit like, if you, go on, if you check out Sweet Tooth's page on Instagram, you, you know, they'll be like, blocks of concrete and mm. you've you've literally done a whole wrap around it or you've put a set of teeth under in you know, you know in, in an area that might be a hatchway of a bar or something mm. and and just just the, that use of space is so yeah. it's on point I suppose it's just thinking of spaces and how to use them you know like with the teeth they're quite thin so you can kind of they can adapt to different places so you mm-hmm. can get them high up or you can get them low down or like you say wrap around blocks and stuff like that but mm. 
I'd always kind of, sometimes I'd go, I'd, some of the spots I've done, I've looked at for years, you know mm. what I mean? And I'd almost like stroke the wall. Mm. And as soon, if I know I can stroke the wall and <laughs> touch it with my hand, then I think, oh, that one's mine. That's you know what I mean? so OG. But, but you, you, you kind of stroke the wall and you think, oh, well, I've stroked the wall now. But yeah. then you might think about it for 10 years and you'll hit that spot within 10 years, you know? So what? or you might do it straight away. So some of the spots I've done, I've looked at for years and years, and then, like, eventually I've fucking done them or somebody else has gone to do them or you, you, you kind of mm. have this relationship so all these spots are in your head. Do you know what I mean? But sometimes you yeah. go and the spot's gone. The spot's knocked down. Or yeah. you do the spot and then the spot gets knocked down Gusted. after doing it, you know? But again, just going back to your... You said it, the pulse of the city. Mm. It's almost like, as a graph writer or street eyes, you've kind of got to know... Uh, the knowledge, yeah, like a cab driver would. Yeah, you kind of get into the vibe and you just see how the city sleeps or how the city's awake, you know. And you see the movement of the people. You see, like, you know, the bars, the areas where it's really lively. It could be a really lively area, but then certain nights, you know, Monday, Tuesday nights, it's really quiet, you know. You just, you just try and get the beat and feel how it how it is there, you know. So it's almost. For me, it's always been important just to even walking around and just feeling the vibe off the place and this at the other, you know, looking for escape routes and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so you kind of, you get familiar with your ground, you know, so. God, but the, I love that. The, the ground changes though, doesn't it? Like you say, it's getting developed so you can, mm. there'd be one way that you run or, you know, stuff like that. It's like I've had situations when I got chased and I've thought I've known the place and I've jumped over a small wall and then mm. there's like, a nine foot drop on the other side and I didn't <laughs> didn't realise so you kind of land in this thing you see all these signs you're like shit I didn't I thought it was only a short wall you know we'll get into the stories in a minute my friend yeah. um, but <laughs> sounds great uh, as things progress with you now I, I'll give some more common characters in, in the forms of eggs um, big up Nathan Bowne as well um, even Zombie with uh, with his character as you as you gain popularity the identity of your work can sometimes become your Achilles heel. Like all mm. of a sudden, like the sweet tooth mm. becomes so no- notable. How, how much pressure does that apply on you when you are going out and doing something? That must be mm. a, pr- as, as a heavy as the crown on the head, right? 